On this episode of the Houndsman XP Podcast, I have got Kevin and Nancy Hall in the house. These are always just like conversations among old friends. We get updates on lion season in Idaho, and of course, we're going to talk about all those great products that dogs are treed. We're going to talk about a sale this coming Sunday, which is known for a big football game that we cannot say on this podcast. Anyway, make sure you're checking them out and following them on social media so that you can get all of the announcements and updates pertaining to that. And guys, I'm going to get right down to it. This is a great conversation and gives you an in-depth look of what's going on out there at Dogs Are Treed. And remember, this hound equipment is made for houndsmen by houndsmen, and it's always the highest quality in the industry. They also have our Houndsman XP gear over there. Stop by there. Shop at dogsartreed.com and pick up a hat, get a decal, join us on Patreon, and you can get both of those shipped from Dogs Are Treed. Let's get down to it. Yep, ready to go. All right. All right. Well, hey, we're excited to have two of our great friends, two of my great friends for sure, and good friends to houndsmen across the United States, Kevin and Nancy Hall with Dogs Are Treed. And uh, how are you guys doing this morning? We're doing great. Thanks, Chris. Doing good. Good. Good deal. So what's going on in Idaho? Well, first of all, it's great great to be on the show again. We appreciate you having us, and we appreciate all that HXP has done for us and for houndsmen in general, especially lately with these uh, anti-hunting issues that have popped up. You've responded to that quickly. and and done lives and done interviews with you know, important people. And it's just been great that uh, you've responded to it in that way. Uh, well, we, great. We yeah. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. You bet. I, you know, those sort of things, I wish I never had to do another one again. Yeah. I wish I never had to um, do a podcast about our hunting freedoms being attacked, but uh, it's the world we're living in. And, and uh, you know, I, I was, I've been thinking a lot about it and, if if I can just influence a hundred hound one hundred houndsmen across the United States, and they know two people, and then they know two people, and then they know two people, you know, we could we could make a big difference on on these events and the amount of influence we have. And um, I I I um, I wish our hounds community. I want I want Joe Houndsman from Kentucky to voice his concern about issues in Colorado, not sitting, sitting back and thinking, well, that doesn't affect me. So I don't really need to send an email. We all need to send emails. We all need to get involved. Well, you can influence people that way. And you are influencing people that way. Um, it reminds me of uh, Chance Smith. Uh, Chance, we met Chance, Chance approached us at the field trial we went to in Boise last summer. And he wanted to uh, let me know that he listens to every episode of yours and he wanted me to thank you because he's a huge fan you know chances in weezer idaho and he works at a butcher shop and uh, he listens to uh, every episode and he learns a lot from each one and um, you know and it's guys like that that you're reaching you're, you're reaching more people than you know the, and, yeah uh, great so hey That's chance you know, i know he's yeah, hey, chance. Yeah. Yeah. thanks chance thanks, appreciate chance. it <laughs> Yeah, you bet. But you do you have bet. a you do have a powerful reach. Yeah. Well, I it's it's uh we're, we try to continue to build that. So yeah, um, you know I think one of the things that that I always want to tell people, you know, I, I've seen all kinds of social media posts pertaining to to uh, the issues right now going on in Colorado, Arizona, and California. Washington, Vermont, New Hampshire, Mississippi, they're all over the country right now. You know, all these issues are hitting at once. And I saw a social media post that said, you know, this has all happened in a week. No, it hasn't. It hasn't happened in a week. It's It's been happening for years. And the anti-hunting crowds are have had this week marked on their calendar for years. And they've had a strategy to do this. They're better than us at running social media campaigns, uh, lobbying and political influence, raising funds. Um, you know, uh, they, they know more about how the process works 
legislative process and the rulemakings processes in these fish and game departments than the hunters do. Right. And, and it's time for hunters to, uh, you know, start working on their black belt in, in for, uh, for verbal judo and media jujitsu and earn that black belt and start training up because it's not going away. Yep. Yeah. So, but we're not here to talk about that. We talk about that stuff all the time. Right. And, uh, we're going to talk about, uh, first, I want to know uh, what's going on with your line season out there. I want to get an update. <clears throat> well, it's interesting you asked. I just talked to our regional uh, wildlife biologist the other day in anticipation of this because we had a big change this year. In many areas of the state, they eliminated the quota. And um, there was a quota. Mostly it was a female quota. Uh, Eastern Idaho had a split male quota and then a female quota that they were, they had tried for a couple of years. Uh, this year, they just eliminated it all together in response to low mule deer numbers, mule deer not meeting the objective. And as a former commissioner so eloquently told me one day when we were arguing about this, he said, Kevin, mountain lion tags don't fuel the department, mule deer tags do. Right. And, uh, you know, at least he was honest. You know, he laid it out. It's all about dollars and cents. And if deer numbers are down, they're going to go hard on predators. And uh, so there was quite a bit of concern about uh, the impact of that, because this same thing happened back in 97 and 98. And the harvest uh, went up dramatically. There was over 100 lions killed in, in our region that first year. And I, I would have never thought that there were a hundred lions out there on the landscape, let alone mm -hmm. you kill a hundred of them and still have some left over. Um, the next year it dropped to about 50. So th there definitely was an impact from that hundred, but at any rate, so, so there was a lot of concern about that for this year, what was going to happen. And, um, you know, the bottom line is that the houndsmen are the custodians of this. It, it really doesn't matter what regulation the department puts out. It's up to the houndsmen in the field that really, decide what the harvest is going to be, you know, so it's really up to the hunters to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And, um, so far, um, year to date last year, the quotas had just been filled at about this time. And there had been 60 lions killed at this time last year, uh, this year it's 39. So it's down significantly. Okay. And he said that the percentage of males in the harvest is way up, uh, way more than females uh previously it was about 50 50 or maybe slightly more on females and that's changed now it's more males fewer mm -hmm. females um last year there was a total of 85 that died in this area from the harvest and the and the non-hunting um you know livestock enforcement issues or car accidents or whatever it might be there was a total of 85. uh this year the total is 43 so far now there's a lot of winter left to go so mm -hmm. that could change you know on this information that's that's as of new year's so you know a lot of this can can still change by the end of the season but the i told him you know my observation is there just aren't that many lines out there because i'm mm -hmm. i'm putting in an awful lot of miles between tracks and coming up with an awful lot of empty days and he agreed he he felt that the the population trend was decreasing anyway um so, so time will tell, but, um, you know, it's been, it's, it's, it, it, we're, we're lucky in Idaho that we aren't fighting some of those same battles that we had just talked about. We just go hunt. <laughs> yeah, you know, our, our battles right. are different. Our battles are different. It's just the opposite, you know, where other states right now are fighting just to keep their lion hunting. We're fighting to get the commission to shut it back down. You know, they're, they're trying to hunt them too hard, you know, right. in my opinion. I, so our, our, our problem is just the opposite. So. That's what I've always, for one, that's what I've, why I've always enjoyed and valued, valued your friendship, Kevin. You're not a guy that's just selling dog leashes and tie outs. I mean, you're actively involved and concerned and in getting the word out about, about conservation issues as well. And, uh, there's nobody to sell a tie out or a lead to if we don't have anything to hunt and we don't have the opportunity to hunt. But on Idaho, if you see, if you see my, uh, tag down here. It says Idaho wannabe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So Idaho is that state that, that just says, Hey, this is our w landscape. This is our wildlife. We will manage it the way we want to. I see that they are just now they're, they're, um, 
making proposals for grizzly management. Right. And it, you know, it, and that flies in the face of the U S fish and wildlife service saying, Oh, well they're on the threatened and endangered species list. And Idaho says, we don't care. <laughs> they did the same thing with wolves. And it's like, this is our game. You stay there. We'll take care of home. I right. love it. Right. We had a grizzly hunt, uh, but it was stopped by a judge after the mm -hmm. tag. There was one tag for Idaho. Uh, the tag was drawn out and then there was an injunction filed and, and the, the hunt got stopped. And so they're in the process of getting it going again. That's but, right. In those That's areas, right. in the greater Yellowstone area where there are grizzlies, they're they're getting thick. It, it's become yes. a problem. I mean, a serious pro a health, a personal safety issue. Uh, one of a friend of ours was um, mauled by a grizzly a couple of years ago while he was archery hunting. Another friend of ours in the, they have a cabin up in, in that area and they have trail cams on their driveway and they get pictures of grizzly bears at least twice a week in their driveway yeah. uh, going to their cabin and the, the, the trails that spin off from there. So it's a constant, a constant, you know, awareness for them to, 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 to know what's going on with the grizzlies because they're, they're all over the place. Yeah. Larry Anderson couldn't even, he was trying to guide lion hunters in the first part of the lion season up in Swan Valley. And he was sending me pictures. His lion tracks were were covered up by grizzly tracks, you yeah. know, and and they're just everywhere. Yeah. I I'm wondering when an organization, you know, the 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 anti animal zealots have been very effective in shutting down hunting using the the court courts to do that for them by filing injunctions and mm -hmm. things like that. I want to know when an organization is going to step up and sue either a state agency or the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service in a wrongful death suit for their failure to manage these grizzlies to some of these people that are getting killed by grizzly bears. Yeah, there you go. And in this area, I think that it would be quite shocking. You know, someone's going to be out in the woods and we don't have grizzlies here, but there's been quite a bit of talk about some of the things that I've heard in that because that population is growing that it's going to start encroaching this way. I mean, we're talking Island Park is two and a half hours away from us. Right. And sure. it, it will start to spread out and then it's going to catch a whole bunch of people by surprise. And and yeah. they're going to be like, wait, why is there a grizzly here? And why am I getting mauled? You know, so. Yeah. Nobody's paying attention to the population density, carrying capacity, all those key components in effective wildlife management. Once you reach, reach the carrying capacity, it's not like the, the mommy and daddy bears are going to have stop them having baby bears. They're just going to expand the range and go find new places to have them. Right. 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 So there was a recent post or a recent story about um, 20 some odd wolves have been killed outside the boundaries of Yellowstone Park. And uh, one comment was that that's a that's a good thing. That means that the wolf population is successful. If you like wolves in Yellowstone, this is an indication that what you've done has been successful and their area is expanding to the point that they're outside the park where they where they need to be controlled. But it's not all bad news for them. So and that's right. And, made and a good point. the the uh, the whole wolf issue, I mean, we can go on and on, but the whole wolf issue when that first started in the, that introduction into Yellowstone, there were several sportsmen and hunters and stuff that are like, no, don't do that. Cause they saw down the road, what was eventually going to happen. But I think the hunting community in by and large has, has accepted the fact that, Hey, if they want to have wolves in Yellowstone and people want to go look at wolves in Yellowstone, that's great. Go do it. You know, we can't hunt there. We, we aren't managing wildlife properly there anyway. It's not science-based wildlife management there. And, and so go for it. Just don't dump them in my backyard. I don't need them here. Right. Yeah. yeah. So the hunting community has been tolerant of that within Yellowstone. It's just, mm -hmm. it's like, we don't need them in Incom, Idaho. That's right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <Amen>. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so how's your, how's your line season going personally? Have you treating your lines? A couple. Yeah. 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 I don't want to get into that too much, but I've been able to treat a few. The first First part of December, there wasn't any snow at all. We had an extremely mild fall. There wasn't yeah. hardly any snow. The first, I had some vacation time set up for the first week of December, and I, I pushed it back. And by the second week, there was a little bit of snow. Uh, by the third week, it started snowing, and it didn't quit until about New Year's. And, and if I got deep out there, suddenly, uh, you know, you know, over your knees and up to your waist type, deep with no base to it and just all fluff powder, 
Um, Man. And that got tough real quick. And um, <laughs> what, it, what it really needed to do was warm up and maybe rain a little bit and settle it, you know, and then freeze. Did it? And, uh, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah. So, so, uh, so it's pretty good. It's pretty good getting around right now. And yeah. So, um, uh, it were you, were you the, just pushed all the deer and elk down to winter ranges where they weren't before. So that generally makes lion hunting a little bit better because it concentrates game. So, yeah. So I'm looking forward to, to having it better for the rest of the season. How was your, uh, how'd your machine do? How'd your on tracks? Were you just like going? It right does great to... until, as long as you've got a base and something that those tracks yeah. can float on, it does great. But when it's just bottomless like that and you start, you know, dragging bottom and maybe pushing it, you know, with the front, it's a struggle, you know, and it's just right. it's without right. match for that. Yeah. But uh, once you get a base underneath there, something you can dig into and float on, it's, it's a great machine. It's amazing. It does what it does well. It does really well. You know, it doesn't yeah. take the place of a snow machine as far as being able to go high marking and go up single track trails and boondock and things like that. But for most of what I'm doing, it's just running up and down a canyon road anyway, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, well, it's awesome for that. Yeah, I really yeah. enjoyed that. Yeah, the heater, windshield, and <laughs> the foster and a cup holder and chargers and all my gear. Yeah. <laughs> What did I say about high maintenance? Yeah. We, we're getting this set up and trying yeah. to get all the lighting right. Oh, yeah. I got to get lights on it. Yeah. yeah. I have to. Turn. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. No, no, I like hey. Machine. Yeah, it's, it's been great. You know, it's crazy the things we find our time, find how we can spend so much time and so much of this lifestyle can consume our time. Oh, man. You know, my, my wife's constantly, what are you doing out in the barn? Oh, I'm, you know, making a modification to this piece of gear. I'm working on this or I'm, uh, you know, doing whatever. And it's all hound related. I'm putting new tiles for the dogs. She's like, well, maybe you could fix the gutter that's hanging off the house, <laughs> yeah. you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, I, know. You know, we're, I don't have time for that. Yeah. Yeah. We're pretty proud, you know, as far as like our vehicles, we have paid off vehicles, you know, and I mm -hmm. don't want a car payment. I don't want exactly. a car. My, I've, I've got a, a Hyundai Tucson and it has never failed me once since 2014. And I don't want any new vehicles. Right. But right. when it comes to the toys, not, yeah. not so restrained there. I bought a different four wheeler this summer because my old one had 11,000 miles on it and it just wasn't reliable anymore. So we bought the, uh, the boss. Polaris big boss six by six, the six wheeler, four wheeler. Mm -hmm got a four by four box on the back dump bed box that make a strike deck out of it and whatnot that machine's been great i wish that i had one is, of those years ago that Oops. box is four foot by four foot it, it, almost yeah not quite yeah wow but, but almost yeah so i've got a rack that i can put six dogs up on it you know and then have storage underneath mm -hmm. and uh, it's extremely stable on side hills and for going up and down you know, on a four-wheeler when you get a bunch of dogs on the back you're you're a little tippy you know, especially right. going up a hill. Right. Yeah, they're wanting to come yeah. over on not this thing because it's got that extra axle back there. And uh, man, it's it, been nice. It actually <laughs> rides like a, a Cadillac. Cadillac. Yeah. I mean, no in kidding. Fact, oh, yeah. when I went on the first ride, we've got some friends that live about two miles yeah. up the road, and uh, it rode so nice. We were excited to drive it up there and back. I mean, I mean it. It's just crazy what a nice machine that is. Well, those, is it, four, those four wheels on the back are all independent suspension. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. That's a lot different than the old one. They yes. Used, the old yeah. ones used to be solid axles. Right. Yes. And they were like riding in the bed of a log truck. They were. Yeah. 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 No, this is entirely different. You don't yeah. feel that transition wow. at all. It's yeah. fabulous. Yeah. 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 So we're excited about it. It plows snow good, too. Yep. So. Yeah, so we're excited about that. He just doesn't have the heater toys. and the windshield wiper on that, so no. I don't know. It's looking awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's a summertime rig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? We're not. We're not. Neither one of us are making any money on on pumping Polaris, and we don't make a whole lot of money other times. But uh, no. um, let's get into Dogs Are Treat. I'm excited to hear what's been going on with Dogs Are Treat, and it seems like every spring you get. You, you come out with something new and innovative. I'm sure you're not ready to launch it yet, but uh, we can at least pry around and, and, and try to figure out what you're up to. You know, dogs are trade. We're in our second year. Last year, of course, was the best year ever. 
Um, and we were able to make it to four different field trials last summer, and we really enjoyed doing that. And we've sponsored a lot of other trials, um, such as the New Mexico Houndsman Association. They've been good friends of ours. We're currently sponsoring uh, the new um, Houndsman Kennel Club and their tree and free contest. They've got a catch and release contest for lions that's going on right now. And we're going to have a prize package for the winner from each state. So we're excited to be helping them. Um, our most popular products are the tie outs. Um, that it's just been amazing how well those have been received. And uh, we've sold over five. I, I know we've bought over five miles of that mainline cable. No way. Oh, yeah. Easily. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We have to yeah, order that we, every... We're ordering it every week almost. Uh, yeah. yeah, 500 yeah. feet here, 500 feet there. It's been... Sometimes a 1,000. Yeah. It just depends. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you guys started making those in custom colors too as well, right? And that's a big change for this year. Yeah, yeah. This fall we started, we got some different colors. And so there's three different mainline colors and nine different colors for the short leaves that you can choose from when you order them. And it's been fun to see the different color combinations that people choose and when they come in and get them laid out and, and they're all cool. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's fun. fun. We'll look at some of them and I'm like, wow, that's, yeah, that was a good idea. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, one of my favorites, I like to call it the Patriot. You know, we've got the white main line and then you can do the red and blue leads. It's just, there's so many of them that are beautiful. And then it was funny because Lauren, when she saw one of the pictures the other day, she's like, oh, it's the watermelon series because it was hot pink and green. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's fun and people, yeah. people are buying tie outs in new colors, even though they really don't need a tie out because they right. see the new colors, but it's been a lot of fun and they're, they're really beautiful. You know, I, I list that as one of my pieces of essential gear. Yeah. You know, when I'm, when I'm traveling to Virginia um, or wherever to bear hunt or lion hunt or whatever, that tie out's always in the truck. Guys watch me set that up. You know, other houndsmen will watch me set that up. And immediately it's like, where'd you get the tie out? <laughs> There's no chains to untangle. There's, you know, all that old stuff that would take, you know, 20 minutes to untangle everything, get it staked out. I mean, I'm not kidding. Three minutes of setup time. Yeah. And you're put and you're putting dogs on the line. Right. And and you don't need two stakes. You don't need and and there's just so many options there. But I want to talk about I want I want to give people an idea and maybe help help out here a little bit from uh but you're how much what's your paid staff look like, Kevin and Nancy? You're looking They're at out it. there. Yeah, it's um, yeah. 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 <laughs> so, so you don't have, you don't pop. have this. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have, you don't have, you know, uh, uh, 20 people out in the, on the floor of your manufacturing plant, putting these things together. Nope. No. And that's the beauty of it too. Cause an order comes in and we go make it, you know, and especially since we went with all these custom colors, we, we were trying to make them ahead. Yeah. Um, you know, cause it was all the same standard two colors that we had. Uh, we really can't anymore because because everybody wants something slightly different. So it's all made on demand. And so we even picked up the slogan, we can make yours next because an order comes in and we go make it. So, so. Yeah. So we used to be able to keep, you know, from like the two, four, two, three, four, five, six, eight, and 10, we would try and keep two or three of the main line in stock. And obviously, mm -hmm. like he said, we can't do that anymore, but we still are turning stuff around super fast. Um, you know, we, we like to have product made and out the door, oftentimes same day, mm -hmm. sometimes two days, worst case scenario, three days only because, you know, Kevin does yeah. drive a train. And so when he's gone, we just have to wait really for him to get back so that we can get that finished up. But mm -hmm. we still are one of the fastest shipping companies, I believe especially in this industry, we knock them out and we send them out fast. Yeah. That means a lot right. to us. It does. Yeah. It, we, it starts to bother us. Honestly, oh, yeah. if it's more than 24 hours and yeah. we've said that before and it really like we start to get agitated. Yeah. Yeah. Just not at each other. Uh, right. <laughs> right. Well, you know, you put, sure. your, you, you, yeah. <laughs> you, you put your money down for something you you, well, you expect to get it. You know, it's, it's the society that we're in, but it's just, just a fact, you know, you just, you ordered it cause you want it. And I learned that right. from my daughter. She's a big shopper online and she said, Oh yeah. When we first started out, she says, if I, if 
I order something that day and I don't see my tracking number by the end of the day, you know, she says, I get frustrated with that. And it's just kind of something that has always been a priority for us. That's great. You know, you know and we... I mean, I, as far as stats go, one of the things that I know that we're both very proud of is our return customer rate, you know, and it's funny because when we first met you, we hadn't been in business very long and right. you had asked us at that point what our returning customer rate was. Mm -hmm. And we were so new, it was like 5%, right? <laughs> and now I see how ridiculous that was, but you got to start somewhere. And now we can have days where we have a whole bunch of orders come in and it can be as high as 50% of those are returning customers that have ordered from us multiple times. So it's kind of a good mix. I mean, if you looked at the whole month, it's usually between about 35 to 40%. But that's exciting too, because we're still getting to help all of the great people that have you know been great supporters of us. But you think about the the growth because mm -hmm. that other 65% or that other 50% are brand new people that are just learning who we are and what our integrity is and how much we value our customers, you know, and our right. good customer service. So there's just, there's a lot that we're really excited about. And you should be, I've watched, I've watched the growth that you've experienced and um, you guys have helped us grow too. So it's okay. been a mutual, it's mm -hmm. been mutually it has. beneficial. It has. And, and as I'm talking to new sponsors, I often bring, bring, dogs are treat up and talk about the relationship that we've had since the beginning and and how we have not only just business relationship but we talk about hunting we talk about you know we we've got oh, yeah. we've got a friendship going yeah yeah i have to tell you something that i think you'll like uh -oh. so i've been very frustrated <laughs> over the last 3 days because we had an order come in from australia and he had first sent us a message and asked if we, you know, if we could ship to Australia. Well, we've done it before, so sure. So what he ordered was two of the Houndsman XP hats. And he was so excited about those. So I go to make the postage label and it's giving me a warning that says USPS has temporarily canceled their first class service to Australia. So, okay, I get a hold of the customer. I let him know. So we, we moved to priority because it was telling me it would do priority. Mm -hmm. I go to make the label, no go. I'm so frustrated because I keep having to, you know, get a hold of this customer. So at that point, he was going to have to pay another $25. He already paid 30 bucks for shipping. He now was going to have to pay another 25, but he wanted those Helmsman XP hats so bad. He was willing to do it. So then I have to let him know, okay, well, it's not letting me print this label. However, there's a message on here that says, if you if we go USPS priority express, that it will allow us to do that. However, the shipping is now like 79 bucks, right? For two hats. He wanted them anyway. He wanted those hats so bad that he's going to pay that difference to get those hats. So. I need to be talking to USPS about a sponsorship, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah. And I and I don't know if it's because of COVID or what, but you know, the shipping companies have had to make a lot of changes and there's mm -hmm. there's staff shortages and all of that. So it could be that. And I think that eventually it'll go back. Um, but I just thought that that was really great that he wanted your hat so bad that he's willing to do that. That's that is a good that's a feel good story, Nancy. Yep. Yeah. You're yeah, welcome. For sure. And something else I want to tie out while we're talking about that is that we've kind of gone with a modular system to where we make them easier to hook together so that rather than getting a 10 dog, a guy might want to think about buying two five dogs or something. Mm -hmm. and, he, and that gives him more versatility as far as setting them up. That's the only problem with the 10 dog is it's 60 feet long. And we right. would make those things and you reel them out so that you can coil them up. And 60 feet long is a lot of cable to be dealing with. And so... So that's just something for people to think about that they might want two shorter ones instead of one long one. And yeah. and one of the things that I've noticed about the modular is you can change directions yeah. in the middle of the in the middle of the line. So yeah. if you've got a if you've got an open run for a, a four or five dog, you might need to do a 
45 degree angle one way to avoid a tree or, yeah. or landscape or whatever. And you can do that. You can even set them up with V's. You can still do it with, you can still set it up with no stakes. Right. I mean, you can yep. off you that modular a tree and your truck. Yep. Yeah. 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 And, and, and you still can do that. Like we do still stock the eights and the tens mm -hmm. in the old style for people mm -hmm. who really just want one continuous. Cause there, we do sell a lot of those mm -hmm. still. Um, and you still can do a different, um, you know, you could do a V or there's different ways that you could still do that. Yep. It's got that big center ring in the middle. Um, so you still can have some flexibility there, but we definitely are selling more now of the modular modulars. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you, if you're traveling like I do and, and maybe you don't want to take the whole pack, right. You know, yeah. all, right. all 10 with you, yeah. you can, you can break it down to yeah. half of, and you've got half the, half the gear to carry. Right. Yeah. Although I will say that that bag that that comes with that tie out is really handy. I can put two eight dog tie outs. I can put my hammer in there. Um, I can't get a stake in it, but right. I can. Right. I put I put a uh, uh, ratchet strap in there for for reaching farther than the cable or going yeah. around a tree and tightening it up. And you know, there's a lot of options there. So the bag is handy too. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and currently, I, I just want to clarify, just not to confuse anyone, but currently we do have those bags as an add-on purchase for $23.99, and so they don't automatically come with it. And the biggest reason for me is that, especially with the modulars, if someone is buying two tie-outs, that bag is roomy enough that one, one bag is enough. They both mm -hmm. will fit. I mean, we put two tie-outs, a med kit, and a whole bunch of other products in it just to see how much it would carry, and it carried a lot. So right yeah. now we keep it as an add-on purchase, but we love to have promotions where we'll do, you know, for a weekend, a free bag with every tie out, you know, every right. invoice right. Has a tie out. So, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's people have really enjoyed that bag and it's, it's not falling apart. It's, it's pretty sturdy. And that thing's been thrown in my truck. It's ridden in my dog box, you know, all over. And it's still, it still looks new. Yeah. As long as you've got that bag, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. You bet. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we can always tell when you've been traveling around the country because we get these, we get, <laughs> we get orders from wherever you've been. <laughs> but that speaks highly for the product, actually. It does. It does. It does. Yep. They. It's just, well. It speaks highly of. Yeah. It's a good product. We and listen, people see people can recognize quality and value. And we want to. We always listen to what customers are telling us. A friend suggested that you know on those snaps because we do it in both the traditional brass bolt snap and the BGB snap, which I really like. And he said, well, how about if you made those with a, a BGB on one end and a regular bolt snap on the other? Well, that was a good idea. <laughs> and so now we offer it that way too. So, you know, when that's we, my favorite. We, we respond to the customers um, and the customers come up with all the best ideas, actually people in the field and we respond to it and it, it's worked out really well. So we enjoy yep. hearing the comments from customers and, Mm -hmm. In fact, you can go to our website and see reviews on all the products now. Those reviews get posted, and and um, people yep. it's really well received. Mm -hmm. What else we got coming from Dogs Our Trader? What else you want to talk about? What's new? Well, what's coming? Well, I mean, got, whatever. It, well, I know, you're the one with the notes. I'm yeah, just right, <laughs> right. Uh, how about more HXP gear? We've got new HXP hats. The Yes, the there are or the canvas back. Is that the material? Um, it's a it's yeah. it's actually an oil canvas, oil yeah. canvas hat. Um, we chose that. It's a it's a. Um, you had to ask me, what is what's the brand of the hat? I can't remember. I believe it's a Richardson. Yes, Richardson. Yeah, yeah. it's a Richardson hat. Yeah, Thank you. Yep, yeah. I was blanking on that. Yeah, they're good. So ones. Richardson is is kind of an industry standard in hats now high quality type stuff and i chose that i chose that oil canvas material because i've worn it and i love it and in yeah. the winter time uh it's it's a good hat in the winter time it keeps your head dry when you're walking through underneath um uh, either in the rain or if you're in the snow country and you're walking under evergreens i learned that by yeah. experience you mm -hmm. know you get a wet head pretty quick and and that canvas hat oil canvas hat is uh endures the weather good yeah it looks so. good too and you've got it in a, in a dark olive green and a tan color so it you know matches like the earth tones that 
you know, a lot of the gear you're probably wearing anyway. And uh, yeah, good looking yep. setup. Good looking. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And we're, we're going to, yep. So, yep. And people can find all the Houndsman XP gear that we have right now at Dogs Are Treat. And you guys are on a specific page for that. So, right. Nancy's got a thermos with the Dogs Are Treat logo on it. And we've been selling a lot of those. It's a good looking thermos. Uh, she made up gift certificates. So you can buy gift certificates on Dogs Are Treat. Mm -hmm. And then that's a great idea because, yep. yep. Like you get a gift certificate, then I can decide what I want to spend that gift certificate on. Yeah. I love I love gift cards and gift certificates. Yep. Um, we've got new logo hats of our own with a a hound treed. It's a those tracing, are sharp. The tracing of of a, a real dog treeing, and so they're very authentic. Yep, very sharp. And Nancy made a new um, hound mom series. Sold quite a few of those. Sold a lot of those mm -hmm. pinks purples mm -hmm. those are good um we talked about the tie out colors <clears throat> we've got a new leash coming out let's talk we'll about, this. about the time that this podcast probably airs by by super bowl sunday we'll have that and i know when i mentioned it to you you thought oh great a new leash you know how can you make a leash different well then the, the, there's things there's things about the the cable leash most of the traditional cable leash comes with a loop on the end a fixed loop and those are those are good leashes and I mean, we sold a heck of a lot of them they're good leashes but that loops kind of always bothered me and so we're making them a little different now the leash is the same as a standard leash you know we've got you know a good quality snap on the end and our thimble and our um, heat shrink you know on the crimp we've got a one inch slide ring on it but when you get to the handle it's got the same vinyl or the pvc tubing um, over wrap over the uh, the handle end but it's not connected back to the leash permanently um, you've got the vinyl and then you've got the snap and another thimble at the very end so that you can wrap it around and hook it to itself and it makes a loop or you can mm -hmm. have it straight and the advantages of that are one when you're carrying it it lays flat against your side you know when you have it over your shoulder if you've got that loop on your side, it tends to twist or gets cumbersome or stuff gets caught on it. It's, and then if there's more than one, then it, it can be somewhat bulky. So by making it a straight leash, the, it eliminates all that and it lays nice and flat. And then it also, when you're going to wrap it around a tree or a branch or a bumper hitch or whatever it is that you're going to tie your dog off to, it's a lot easier to wrap that feed that single line through or around something than it is to try to get the loop around something. And so it's just a bit more user friendly. It's the same leash, but we just, we call it the loopless leash because it doesn't have a permanent loop. And so I think nice. on that for people who have purchased the hiker light from us, yeah, it's designed almost the same way. Mm -hmm. um, so if they were trying to picture, okay, what is he talking about? If, if you've seen the hiker light, if you've used it, seen it, um, it's similar to that, but it's not with that smaller cable and it's not with the smaller snaps. It's more of the original size of things. Yeah. Just, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I carry the hiker light. I carry the hiker light with me in my pack is yeah. as a, as an extra, yeah. as a spare, you know, it's, Ideal. it's kind of like the, uh, it's kind of like the emergency. I, I've got somebody else's hound here, or I left my I left my leash at the truck, or I need an extra leash, and boom, I've always got it with me. It, it doesn't weigh anything to carry. It. What the advantages I see with this new leash you're coming out with, you know, when you've got that permanent loop, there was always a breakdown in that loop. Uh, you guys have remedied some of that with the heat shrink, but it always rusted and deteriorated right there at the crimp, and eventually that loop is going to break. Yeah, it's going to break. So by making it a straight line and a thimble and heat shrunk, then we eliminate that. So the cost of this, you know, I was just at the Grand American and there were racks of seven dollar leashes there. I mean, and and you look at those and you think, do I buy a seven dollar leash or do I spend more money and buy, you know, I can buy seven dollar leash five times or I can buy. A dogs are tree leash one time and have it the life of all seven of those other leashes. Yeah. And then the, the loop deal or the, the hook, the other thing that that snap did all those traditional leashes 
they always just put that brass snap right in the loop. Right. You know, and, and, and so it's just riding in there. Yeah. And when you attach that to a tree or bring it around and snap it back into that ring, it wears in that loop mm -hmm. and it wears your loop out fast. In the same spot. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's, you know, it, it creates a pinch point right there. Yeah. And eventually you're going to, you're going to break that leash. Yeah. 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 I think about that when I build them, I think you guys are going to lose this leash before they wear it out. That's right. And that's, that's a good way to have a leash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think of all the times I've been on a side hill and had dogs tied to a tree and two dogs on to a leash and there's, something in the tree that bails out and runs down the hill the direction I do not want to go. And I'm totally relying on that leash to hold those dogs there. <laughs> yeah. It's a big yeah. deal. It's a big deal. And I've, it's got I've had the, I've had the leashes break at that loop uh, where yeah. it rusted away while I'm leading dogs out and boom, now you've got, what are you going to do now? You know, right. you got three feet of slick cable right there. You, you, it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> It'll come in all, we got nine different colors now in that cable. So, so there's lots of options that people are going to have with it. And I think it's going to really go well. Yeah. yeah. Nice place. We like it. We've had, you know, of course, anyone in business is going to have comments, you know, and things like that about certain things. And we've had a couple of customers that have, you know, either texted us or called us to try and find out what's your best price on this. You know, we, I, I can get this leash for, like you said, $7 or $9. And that's great um, if that's what you want, if you want to be replacing those. We don't really like to buy things just to have to replace them in a couple of months. And so right. that's how we figure out, you know, how we want our products to be made. And, and we think about that durability factor and all of that. So we just will never, ever have a $7 leash. It's just, it's not our... It's not our goal. Right. Yep. We want things that last. Well, the houndsman's going to test it. The houndsman's going to test it. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, pulling snowmobiles out of a, a snowbank with a leash, you know, <laughs> using that right. tow rope, you know, all kinds of things. Yeah. I was um, kind of look, looking through your website here. Oh. Um, so just giving us an, an idea, your standard leash right now, what's the cost on your standard leash? Oh gosh, What's your you're price? Yeah, on yeah, the spot. Put on the spot. I think it your price. Be... What, what are you showing there? $23? <laughs> no, yeah. that's 19, 19. <laughs> yeah. I don't I, mean, I don't I don't true. buy them. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, yeah. Had, we um, had to raise them a couple dollars because of the um uh, just everything that's going on yeah, in the world. Yeah. And we all of a sudden started taking a pretty big hit. So yeah. If they are now our standard single dog leash is nineteen ninety nine, and the two dog is twenty three ninety nine. Yeah. Um, yes. One of yes. the great things about us is that you know we see a lot of the other um, websites they'll do they'll get excited about a ten percent discount, and I, that's great. That that's really great. But we definitely like to run more promos, I think, than what a lot of people do, and so you'll see those on sale a lot. So mm -hmm. yeah, but nineteen ninety nine and twenty three ninety nine. Yeah, so and there's always the Houndsman H HXP discount. HXP twenty percent right. off discount code. So you can get deeper discounts there. That's um, right. If you join us on Patreon, you'll get a bigger discount than that. That's right. Um, but let's do some math here. So you're selling that leash for nineteen ninety nine. The cheapest that I've seen leashes is around seven dollars. So say if, if I have the dogs are tree leash for 10 years, that's $2 a year for yeah. that leash. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, and, and I don't have to, like you said, I'm going to lose it before I wear it out. It's going to be a permanent piece of my gear. Um, it's just, it, that's the way I like to do business. You know, I like to buy stuff one time. Yeah. I don't like to buy it every other week. Like Nancy said. Yeah. Well, and I'm not going to tell our exact cost on that, but when you start adding in number, first of all, people would be completely shocked if they knew how much that heat shrink was. Yep. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, we have to order it in many, many, many rolls to keep up with everything. So when you're looking at the cost of what our leashes cost, um, mm -hmm. especially for like a two dog, our two dog cost wise is already 
several dollars more than what people are selling a seven dollar leash for. I mean, right? They are expensive to make, but mm -hmm. but that's what we choose. We're not running a yeah. sweat shop, like you said. Exactly. Before. It's us two, and our time is worth something. Well, and not only that. I mean, I'm going to say it again, and I say this when I promote your company. It's a hounds. It's a houndsman. It's a company ran by houndsmen yep. that know what houndsmen need. Yep. And it's not trying to get junk out the door to make a buck. You guys, every every product you guys have ever made, I've looked at it and I've thought, you know, this is a valuable product. This isn't just a a race, is your term, race to the bottom on see who can sell the most. You're yeah. you want to sell quality. Yeah, I mean, and I and I know that people have never seen this from us because they're not in our house when we're done with a product and it's all, it's got the straps all tied and, and everything. But when we we're holding that tie out and we're getting ready to, to put it in a bag and, and put it in a box, we literally are looking at it and we're, we, we're seeing its beauty. Yeah. yeah. It, it is, yeah. it is not I, just some quick piece of, of stuff that we make and we throw in a box. Like we are, it's like seeing our baby. You know, because we, which, you know, we don't have it. But, yeah. anyway, but it, to us, that's what it is. Like, we, we literally will verbalize, oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Yeah. You know, I mean, because yeah. it is. Well, and it makes you proud because you know that this guy in Wisconsin is going to love this tie up. Yeah. We, yeah. We, we, yeah. We yeah. We I don't even know him, but he's going to love it. We literally visualize and talk about it often about how that customer is going to feel when they open that box. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Um, what other, what other products I want to shift gears. We got about mm -hmm. 15 minutes left here. Um, any other big announcements we need to talk about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. there is. We just closed a deal yesterday on an antenna GPS tracking antenna. It's from LL electronics. And you'll recognize that name from the telemetry mm -hmm. industry. They've been making telemetry since 1974 and they started in falconry and shifted to dog tracking as well. And I used to have one of their old MN10 uh, receivers back in the day. I ran a lot of their equipment. Um, of course, when GPS came out, you know, it put the telemetry guys in a bad spot. Um, but l and &L has not sat back and not responded to that. They looked at the GPS and thought, what can we do to add value to this system? And their answer was in the antenna. Um, in a, um, you know, a packable, expandable, long range antenna, you know, the antenna yeah. that you use when you when you go question mark, and you need something more than the standard antenna. Um, what, what the manufacturer offers is a long collapsible tube antenna. All right. Um, and those are good. But uh, L and L has come up with a like a double bladed Yagi type antenna. So it looks For just GPS? like GPS. For GPS, it looks like your old telemetry antenna, but it's it's a two element, and it's on a nice uh, firm handle. I wish I had it with me. It's done. It. It's in my backpack right now. Is where it's at. <laughs> right. But it folds out, and it, it's real handy. The um, the the side antenna arms, you know, they're they're like on a, a tent pole type bungee. Um, okay. Cord, cord, and so yeah. they snap into place easily. And shock it has a cord. Nice handle on it. Shock cord. Thank you. And then it, you know, it screws in to the to the a GPS unit and picks up the it's it's tuned to the uh, frequencies the 150 to 160 megahertz frequency that GPS uses and it is a big improvement over the omnidirectional collapsible antenna mm -hmm. you know that antenna is good it's it's an improvement over the the standard antenna but it's good. The, the, the way it works is it, it it stands up there and it's trying to pick up a signal from every direction. And mm -hmm. whatever signal finds it, it picks up. The, with the directional antenna, it's it's more focused. And wherever it's pointing, it's sending. It's like it's like the diagrams of um, of a headlight beam. You know, and you've got your your floodlight versus your directional long range light. Well, the omnidirectional antenna is like a floodlight that's picking up everything from all around. But the, with the Yagi antenna, it's more like the focused beam, you know, in uh -huh. that direction. And man, that flat works. Um, you had to use my it. friend of mine, Steve, tracked it. Um, one of his callers, sixteen point seven miles, and he ran out of 
road. He, he was doing a test and he had it on a high point and he was just driving out the valley on a road just to see how far it would pick up from. And he got up to 16.7 miles, still had a strong signal and he ran out of road. So it could have gone farther than that. Where I found it's been really good is when the dog's around a corner, even, you know, dogs just up the canyon that you're in, but he went up a side draw and he went question mark and you can't pick him up. And you get that thing out and pointed up the canyon and boom, it finds him. And it's been great. Um, wow. It's uh, easily packable size. You know, like I said, mm -hmm. mine's in my backpack right now. It's always going to be there. Um, you know, there's some really good antennas made for pickups. Um, but when you're not in your pickup, you still need, you need something more. You need something when you're out on foot or you're out on horseback or out on your side by side or, uh, you know, whatever it might be. You still need a, a, little, a bit more antenna, you know, right. and no matter where you're at, whether you're in the east or the west. So when and do we think we're going to get those in stock? They'll be here by the time this podcast airs. Yeah, we'll have them in stock by the time this Great. podcast comes out. And so we're working in partnership with LL Electronics on that. And, and, and from my point of view, if you've got a GPS unit, you need one of these. You know, everybody needs one of these. And that's why we're carrying it because we, we bought one. And I've been using it, and I'm sold on it. And I thought, man, we we need to we need to carry things. This is this is a good product, and so. Yep. And they they checked out our website and ran through all of that, and they liked what they saw. So from us, they're going to yep. let us be a wholesaler of that. Yep. Great. So great. Um, we're going to be able to offer that, and uh, we'll put some videos out on it and whatnot. And I think people are really going to like that. So we're excited okay. about that addition. You brought up a topic that I want to I want to touch on and maybe um maybe we can end on this but the wholesaling deal when i go out to events major events uh and my sponsors and different things will contact me and ask me if dogs are treed does wholesaling will you wholesale to other um dog supply companies yes okay yes that was easy. Yep. What else were we going to talk about? Yep. <laughs> I, I told you I wasn't going to come on another one of your podcasts until we had the book done. Oh. <laughs> and so here we are, and it's off to the copywriter. Is so it really? The tracking the long walker is still alive. That cat is wow. still alive. Yeah. It ends up at 28 chapters. It may not be alive at the end of the book. You'd have well, to read it to find you'd out. You'd have to read the book to find out. Yeah. 28 chapters it covers kind of a life story of four different lions there's a lot of local people and places in the book it's got some idaho history but it's not a history book you know it's got some idaho geography but it's not a geography book <laughs> it's about lions and lion hunting but it's not a how-to book you know it's just right. stories about lion hunting but there's something there for everybody from new hunters to old hunters alike are going to find nuggets in there that that's just authentic you know and they're really going to enjoy it now um, there's even a little bit of poetry in it a poem that my dad wrote actually i'd read it to you but it would make me cry so I, i'll just leave it <laughs> in the book yeah i understand uh, there's some personal stuff in there there's some personal stuff i've come to a dead stop a couple of times on a couple of chapters that hit personal places you know like secrets that i had like like that are kept back with your resentments in those deep places where they can't hurt you you know yeah. And they've come out, you know, in the process of writing this book, they've come out and it, and it comes out and it just shuts me down for about a month or two. <laughs> I'm like, I can't go back to that. Um, yeah. So it's, it's been powerful, actually, for me to write it. And, but uh, there's some suspense and there's some gruesome things at time. Um, there's a story about a murder that happened in Idaho. Uh, it's a real story. So there's a lot of stuff in this book. He'll get he'll get done writing, you know, a chapter. And sometimes I'll hear him after he rereads it. He's just like, man, that is so good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I've, I've been privy to some of it. Um, yeah. And I'll just, I'll just describe it, how I feel about the story of the long walker. You know, there's a lot of books out there that tell somebody's personal story about, about their story, but you took this whole thing and built it around the lion story, the thing that a lion would experience or see out there on the, you know, while he's out there on his long walk. Yeah. It is so unique. It's yeah. so unlike anything else out there that I've read. And, um, 
I am genuinely excited that that book's done because I can't yeah. wait to read it. Yeah. Yeah. Personifies the lion. Well, and I appreciate the, the motivation that you've given me because I know you asked me about it from time to time and it's kind of kept me going. You know, Good. and Nancy's kept me going. And I'm sure that's your biggest motivator right there. Well, yeah. <laughs> Uh, a no, lot it's of the you. Guys, yeah. No, no. Chris is going to ask me about it the next time I talk to you. <laughs> but we get uh, a lot of comments. I get a lot of messages from guys, uh, from customers and, and people that are out there and saw some of the chapters. clips, the chapters that we had published. Um, it's been two years. Yeah. Um, and they want to know how, how it's gone, you know. And uh, so they haven't forgotten about it, which is quite inspiring in itself. So Right. So, Man, that is some good news. So I can't wait news. to get my hands on that. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Now, this this whole process is new to us, so I have no idea. Who knows? Maybe we'll have it all ready, and it'll be for sale and available. Maybe for Autumn Oaks. Maybe who, for who Autumn knows? Oaks. Yeah. We yeah. Might there you go. Out there, I don't know. Yeah. That'd be fun. You, we've we've got some big plans for Autumn Oaks this year. So oh, really that no. we're not, we're not ready to announce yet, but All right. yes. All right. So good. you good. You need to uh, be marking your calendars to attend Autumn Oaks, which is Labor Day weekend, right? Labor Day weekend. Yeah. Yep. Only if you leave room for us in your booth, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know it, you know it. No. Don't I got a new pup. <laughs> I've heard that you've got a, pup out there i got a new pup um that's a blue tick we do not have time to talk about i don't know if we have time to talk about this but we do because we can make time for this well I'm, <laughs> to keep it in perspective i have not had a non-plot since 1983 i got into plots in the early 80s and it's been nothing but you know, i take that back there's been a couple of curs there's been a stevens cur and a leopard cur and one of those McDuffie strain camas curves that he was working on. Do you remember those? I yes. ended up with one of those. I remember yeah, reading he, about them in the old Full Cry magazine. That's right, in the old Full Cry. Yep. And so, but there's been a few curves come and go, but it's been nothing but plots since the 80s. So to get a dog from a different breed was quite a leap for me. Mm -hmm. We weren't even uh, sure if the plots were going to accept, accept him. him. <laughs> I mean, yeah, honestly, yeah. it's not yeah. a joke. Uh, that was, hopefully this works out. Yeah. Yeah. Now they like him. You know? Does he think does he think he's a plot or he does think he think he's a plot? Yeah, we have he? He, he doesn't know. But he fits right in. And yeah. he can't see his own spots. So. Right. Right. Yeah. But you know, I needed a dog that was able to self teach himself. Uh, because I don't train in the old ways. I don't train like I used to train. You know, I used to be a lot of drags and hanging a cage over their head. <laughs> Lots and miles and miles of drags, you know, but I don't do that anymore. A lot of the old training techniques are in the past. Can't do mm -hmm. them anymore, you know. And so, need a dog that just hunts, and um, this dog fits the bill, you know. And I don't want to be bragging about. He's just seven months old now, and so we all know better than to brag about a seven-month-old pup. But that being said, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the dog is smart and he's very trainable. When I teach him something, he remembers it, and that may yeah. not sound like a big deal. That's a big deal. Uh, that's a big deal. Um, he's obedient. He's got a huge motor and a big mouth and he's good looking, you know, and I'll, I'll stand him up and rack him out, you know, and when I'm judging bench shows, you know, the easiest way to judge bench shows is you just look around at all the dogs and you just find the dog's fault. And, you know, when you move on, you find a fault, you find a fault with their feet or their toes or their, their cow hawked or their their back or or their proportion between the you know their legs to their back length you know proportion or they're too narrow or they're too wide or they're you know, you know they're droopy eyed or or you know the faults are easy to find you know mm -hmm. when you're looking for them when you rack this guy out <laughs> you have a hard time finding a fault right yeah hard time finding a fault yeah I bet I bet the breeder was pretty particular about you know, finding that and eliminating some of those faults and breeding <laughs> brains and trainability and hunt drive and, and different things. Well, my confession there is that, you know, not, most of the time when I'm looking for a dog, I'm all about the research, you know, and I'm digging into that deep and I'm going right. through paperwork and I'm calling people three, four generations back, you know, just to ask about this dog or that dog. And that's not the way it happened. With I'm just totally reliant on all those breeders in the past. Uh, you know, on this one, 
but uh, they obviously knew what they were doing. <laughs> exactly. He, uh, he treed at the first tree he was ever at. I led him to his first lion tree, and he, I, I just as I was getting to the tree, the cat jumped out, and I ran to another tree just 100 feet away, close, and mm -hmm. I turned him loose. And by the time I got there, he's treeing. And he hadn't treed on anything yet. I hadn't showed him anything over his head yet at that point. Right. And he was training when I got there and he never stopped. <laughs> and um but then and then I had a pretty good track one day and I put my, my best dog on it and he took off opening freely and I knew it was a good track. So I just let him go. And he ran with my other two dogs track for track the entire way and treeing when I got there. So he made his first track. And uh so we're pretty excited about him. Yeah. Cool. Not bragging, well, not bragging about him. Right, I it, understand. It's just, uh, I hope. Since, since I know the guy that bred this litter of pups, I can give you an update on the uh, the rest of the litter. Casey Stutzman has two of them up there in Idaho, or I'm sorry, Montana, and uh, he's been running them online. He's he's very pleased. He has similar comments. Jacob Campbell has mm -hmm. one in West Virginia that he's very happy with. He says the same thing: big motor, brains. You know, plenty of plenty of drive, pr prey drive and hunt drive seem to be in the right amount. And then I've got one that uh, I've bear hunted and I didn't even mean to do it. I mean, it was totally accidental. And I, I'm not the guy that that uh, wants to get a young dog beat up and hurt the first time they're out hunting. This this pup, I just more or less was carrying him in the truck with me just to get him used to riding and different things like that. And then I one day I let him out, uh, to, to walk with me down the trail and he jumps in on a bear race and runs it for, man, I don't even know how far they ran that bear past me three times. And, uh, he was at the, at the bay up keeping his distance. You know, he wasn't in its face, yeah. uh, pulling hair and stuff like that, but he was there. And, um, then from after that, man, he started treeing and, and doing different things. The, the bear bait up and then it climbed a tree and boom, you know, he's, he just rolls over into tree. It was amazing. Very consistent litter. Well, I have yeah. to say that I think I heard you on a podcast talking about his sib, one of his siblings that you happen to maybe own. And all of those things that you were talking about, our jaws dropped open because those things are exactly what he does. <laughs> when you were talking about when you come home, if you don't go over there and, and, and acknowledge him and whatever, whatever he wants, he will continue to bark mm -hmm. until you do. And then <laughs> and after yeah, you hard. do, he's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. For us is hard because Kevin could get home at 2 a.m. <laughs> yeah. He could get home. Yep. You know, it doesn't matter. Kevin gets home at all different times right. when he's been gone to work. And, uh, but he's, he sounded exactly like what you were saying about the pup that you have. And it, the, it was laughable. It was funny to hear you say that. Junior, your, your dog, your pup's name is Junior. Right. Uh, big country, Junior. He's out of big country and my jazz female. It's a second cross we've made. Um, when I had Mongo, then Mongo, well, let's back up to big country real quick. I mean, they're just smart dogs and, they just stretch out on the gate and they look at you and they yep. whine and they have like great big babies. <laughs> and, and as soon as you come over and talk to them and pet them and tell them everything's okay, man, they're done. They go back in their dog houses are good. Yeah. Um, you know, just it, people are constantly asking on social media about, you know, what kind of pups big country is throwing. And I do believe that, that the female plays a big role, but I've never, ever seen a stud dog like this that marks his pups with looks and ability. I can see videos of a blue tick or even a, some of these Walker crosses that are treed, you know, they do the tree videos of them. Yeah. And I recognize them, you know, yeah. I recognize them. I recognize them there. It, it's, it's uncanny yeah. how prepotent he has been as a stud dog. And it's, it's nothing to do. I, I'll, I'll put this in there too. It has nothing to do with anything that I did or Donnie Walston did. Right. You know, this is years of concentrated breeding that the guys long before us recognized and they created that mm -hmm. we were just the beneficiaries of it. And, 
you know, Donnie, and I'm really a beneficiary of it because Donnie allowed me to be a part of it. Well, we're glad that they did because yeah. um, they've got something going on there. That's for sure. Yep. I think he's, yep. I think he's going to definitely leave his mark. Well, yep. I didn't want a new puppy, but <clears throat> I'm glad it's him because he's yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What we miss? We got well, any, any final thoughts? Final thoughts. I wanted to mention a couple of episodes that you've done. Uh, the episode on with Shorty on raising dogs on a budget was really, uh -huh. really good. And if anybody missed that, they that's one to save and go back and listen to over because there's some real gems in that one, you know, about getting your, your warmer, getting ivermectin at tractor supply for your dog, for mm -hmm. get it for the horse, for the dog. And um, and he gives you all the right doses and everything. That one was really good. Now, if he could just come up with some Regeneron and some hydroxychloroquine, you know, we'd be in business. Right. <laughs> that went over my yeah, head. Yeah, right. Um and this whole series, um, the truth series with Josh has really been an eye opener for me as a Western hunter. Uh it's been a great exposure to Eastern hunting and the competition coon hunting. I I guess I guess I have to admit I was pretty naive about a lot of the things that are going on back there. You know, like sixty five hundred dollar hunts, truck hunts and guys that that you know that cast cost me a four wheeler, right? Hundred thousand right. dollar hunts. Yes. Um, you know, I mean, around here it's um, ten dollar entry fees at the field trial, and you're questioning whether that was money well spent or not. You know, right? Uh, yeah, a whole different league back there. You know, you know, so it's been great. The thing about the thing about competition coon hunting is it's something that that every it's what I grew up on. It's what I grew up doing. Um, it's made such a big impact in our hounds and, and the hound sports. And Josh does a great job of being able to present that in a way that um, is appealing to people and interesting. He's a great mm -hmm. host. He does a great job over there on that with the truth. Um, I personally was staying away from it before we brought Josh on board because I had kind of some mixed feelings about, about competition coon hunting i've done it my whole life but i kind of got over it um josh has regenerated and shown me what value there is in it yeah and not only for the podcast but overall value you know if we're going to make hound hunting mainstream then this is a great way to do it i mean we're talking about there's two different registries going to host one hundred thousand dollar payouts this mm -hmm. year you know, that's the grand prize is a hundred grand. Uh, we've got the tournament of champions, which is going to pay 50 grand. We've got, you know, the legacy series. We've got the slant. We've got all these things that this is big business and big industry and it's mainstream stuff. And oh, I often, I often ask myself, where would we be as a hunting in the hunting community as houndsmen without, without competition coon hunting? Yep. That's what I've started my asking myself in the last six months. Yep. Well, yeah, that series has been great. It's made yep. me rethink the value of my dogs. You know, I think that my thousand dollar dogs now are about worth at least twelve fifty. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's always great to talk to both of you. And um thank you. Yeah, I, I just can't say it enough. If you need the highest quality products made by houndsmen for houndsmen, then you need to visit Dogs Are Treed, order from them on their website, and um, watch for Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> Super Bowl Sunday. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. There'll when be it's Super, ads, there'll you're, be some you're, promos. You're putting some pressure on me because so, I'm not even sure when Super Bowl Sunday is. And, February 13th. Okay, I've got some time. Yeah. To get yeah. this put together and make sure it's out by Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah, yeah, there would be big sales on Super. We did some impromptu sales last year on Super Bowl Sunday, and it was the biggest day we've ever had. Yes, the biggest I remember you saying that day. And so we thought, well, we we'll to make that a thing, and so customers can watch for that. Yep. Yeah. Well, thanks for all your work that you do for uh, for the hound hunting community and and um, pumping out great products. Thank you. Thank you, yep. Chris, so Good much. Good talking to you. We appreciate you. you. Bet. Yep. All Thanks right, until everybody. next You bet. Until next time, you follow your hounds on I'll Follow Mine.